Hey there again guys, welcome back to another Train Sim World 2 video, and surprise, surprise, we are on the Clinchfield, no less. But today, got some new goodies, couple of mods, we are in the SD40. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set this thing up, because it takes a while to get the brakes to come off. And then uh, I'll describe as we get going here. Go ahead and throw the key in. Select it for one engine, because that's what we got today. Get the gauge lights on, set our headlights. Cut our brakes into lead. Cut into freight. Number lights. We are ready to roll. Alright, so while the brake pipe is doing its thing, it's got to get up to like 70, I think, or something. I don't know the exact number um, but I've, I've seen a lot of people mentioning the brakes are jacked up and they don't really explain a lot of it. the the tutorials kind of helped a little bit but uh, we we would desperately need a manual anyway let's get into it so the SD40 as we knew was not going to be that great uh, from the get-go they they said they might add another horn at some point uh, they being dovetail but anyway, I've got a few mods on this thing today, one of which being an emblem mod uh, made by a fella named NGC, which you can get from, uh, I think, Train Sim Community. I will put the link down below in the description, as with every other mod. So we have got our plates on. LaGrange EMD plate. And then here as well. So that's one. That's mod numero uno. The second one is a sound mod. Another guy by the name Griggs uh, has been making quite a few mods for some of the North American stock, namely the F7 and the SD40, and he's pumped out uh, a sound mod pack for the CSX sand patch grade uh, as well. And we've got a horn. Uh, the horn is another mod by a dude, same dude, named NGC. Again, I'll put all the links down below. Just check underneath um, the description and you'll find where to grab them if you want to do so. Of course, this is on PC and mods are only for PC. Anyway, let's get started. I forgot to release the brakes like a numpty. <laughs> so we're going to be sitting here even longer. Plus, we are not on the main line. Uh, we are heading down a branch line. Well, I lied. We are on the main line. Uh, we're currently at the Allen storage siding. We're going to the uh, the Blue Diamond um, coal facility. It's going to be on the Nora Spur. So the Nora Spur, which where we're going, is this joker right here. The, the southeastern spur. Anyway, I set this up with the scenario designer. We've got uh, 20 empty coal guns, 70s and 100 tonners, of course. It's always mixed. Anyway, we're going to take these up to the, uh, the Blue Diamond facility. A uh, little bit about the Nora Spur. It is one of the oldest on Clinchfield Railroad uh, of its branch lines, anyway. It, it started up, I think, in 1925, um, and the Blue Diamond mine ran... Uh, I think the 40s, early 1940s, all the way to 1989. Alright, let's get a couple of notches down in preparation. So yeah, anyway, big facility, one of the oldest on Clinchfield. So it's kind of unique to be able to, to do stuff like this. They, they certainly would have made moves like this, taking empty coal guns to the facility to pick up and then... Uh, onwards to be processed on the Fremont branch. Still waiting on that brake pipe. If you can look at the HUD down on the bottom right, you'll see it rising. Top brake pipe. So we have just got to chill here till they uh, turn us loose from their mighty grip. is completely normal too by the way like I said I've seen a few comments uh, online and you know 
streams, etc. People talking about the breaks with the with this rolling stock, and it's while the numbers and the actual physics may not be precise and exact, um, it would take a while to uh, release, depending on the length of train, of course, and uh, what it's set up as. Now we have it set on freight, the freight setting, which uh, is a little bit more grabby. If we were to set that to the passenger setting, it would be uh, a little more relaxed, I guess. Easiest way you could say it. Alright, they're getting there. It's close. Should turn us loose. We're starting to roll a little bit. There we go. There we go. Let's get the windows open. So yeah, you can already tell if you listen to the default engine sound versus this, there's a notable difference. Ah, and of course the horn. Uh, the horn mod from the guy NGC. It's it's a more prototypical Leslie uh, RS3L. We'll go ahead and display that now. The bell remained unchanged, but uh, you know I'm I'm cool with that. Beggars can't be choosers. All right, so we are going to run up to the Blue Diamond Siding, which is about six miles, it says. Let's make sure we're pathed correctly. Which we should be. Anyway, yeah, the engine sounds noticeably different. They sound a lot better. Um... Does, does it sound like perfect one-to-one? -one, uh, like a 16645E3 would sound? Probably not, but you know, from, from using the Unreal Engine and, and somebody supplying their own mod, you know, to me, it's fantastic, you know, I'm very thankful. The horn sound as well, and the, uh, the plates, the EMD plates, which, by the way, this plate um, mod here uh, works with the S7 as well. But a little bit too about what we're in, the SD40, which is not the SD42. This is the uh, this is the older brother, I guess you could say. The Dash 2's got. Uh, upgraded internal electrical systems um, which basically improved efficiency and, and maintenance from the uh, the locomotives as a whole but uh, these had 3,000 ponies as well 3,000 horsepower it's the same 16 cylinder 645 e3 uh, turbocharged too of course you can kind of hear that screaming a little bit in the background they came with optional dynamic, uh, brake dynamics, I guess for whatever railroad wanted to purchase said option. The Clinchfield had about 20, 25, 24, 25 of these suckers. And they started their numbering at about 3,000, I think. Uh, something else I'd like to point out while messing around with this, getting the, uh, the thing set up. Sun visor here. Doesn't work. You can click it. You can hear a noise being made, but it does not actually do anything. Alright, here we go. Let a little more sound in here. See the rest of our empty guns coming out of the tunnel. 
Amps are falling. We'll go ahead and throw it up notch eight. It's got some nice sound though, man. Especially when uh when you put some grunt down to it. It's it's got some nice thick exhaust note, uh, as well as a high pitch turbo whine. Well, a little bit of slippage there. I'm gonna drop into seven. We are going uphill. About a 0.9% grade. So yeah, anyway, these things right here, they make a noise. You can click it. They don't do shit. Alright, here we go. Off the branch line. Alright, so, were we to keep straight on and kind of curve around to the left, that would go down to Dant. We're popping right here. Onto the Blue Diamond Mine. So, this is pretty much going to be it. Just want to kind of put these mods out there in case some of you may not know about them. We're just going to listen to the thing and, and run on down the uh, the Nora Spur here. And just listen to the mods and all that good stuff. That's about it. Nothing too crazy. Get some external sounds as well. You can hear those blowers going, the fans. Now, I'd also like to mention, someone has made a, a mod for the number board cover as well. Kind of stripes going on here. When I first looked at that, I thought it was meant to be like that. I thought it was kind of a wavy plastic texture, but the more I looked at them, uh, they don't look right. So anyway, somebody made a mod for that. You can download that as well if you'd like going to be on the same website. Everything else will be linked to. Alright, we're going downhill. Play with the horn a bit. Some more Oh, back up real quick. Wow. It's like 0.3 down to 0.6 up, and now it's flat. That is, I gotta say, that's markedly better than the uh, default horn that came with this thing. It's the same horn that was on the Sandpatch grade, SD40-2.
All right, we got four miles to the Blue Diamond Mine siding. We'll do down here. Uh, we'll run down here. We'll do a pass by. See what it sounds like. Coming up the mountain here. I love the ambient sounds on this route. I mean, it's it's kind of in the middle of nowhere, but I, I feel like the ambient sounds here are more alive than some of the other routes. Oh yeah, that sounds really nice actually. Definitely got some grunt to it. So these are 20 empties going up to the mine. As there were various mines around the clinch field, uh, and I think for the most part independently operated uh, as a whole. You know, it's it's coal straight out of the mountain, so it'd be unrefined. And uh, then they take them up to the Fremont branch, which has got the huge refinery. And then uh, usually shipped down south, like down here to where I live, feeding uh, power plants day in, day out. A little branch here, what is that? Huh, I don't even know where that goes. I didn't notice that earlier. Alright, 1.2. Notch six, the amps are rising. That does sound pretty nice. The, uh, the default sounds quiet, way too quiet. They just sounded off. Um, it's a big thank you to the guys, just like any modders doing any kind of mods for Transim World 2. Um, it, for me, it, it makes the game so much better in so many aspects. And, uh, you know, being that the SD40 with Clinchfield, we, we kind of knew from the get-go that it'd be a, a side piece if you will, uh, this makes it usable um, from my perspective. And also, you know, if you get tired of running the main line on this, check out the little scenario creator. I, uh, I finally figured out how to use it a couple of months ago, and it's it's pretty straightforward once you do it, once you get your head around it, but uh, using it here especially, uh, where, just to preface, I tried looking for something to run with the SD40 uh, in, in all the services that came with the game, and they, you know, half of them were, you know, in the middle of the night, dark as hell, which is completely normal. That's not what I'm talking about. I, I just want to be able to see what I'm doing. It, it's a game. Um, so there's only a couple that are actually daylight. And they're all kind of samey. And they don't really go anywhere aside from the main line. So if you want to check out these other branches. Uh, do yourself a favor and check out the uh, scenario creator. Because you can hit every one of them.
and there are quite a few. Well, four, I think, total. Drivable. And it just, it adds different operation, you know? You, uh, you can take empties to the mine itself, the, uh, you know, full guns down to Dant, or actually up to uh, the Fremont branch for refinement and processing. You know, you could you could do something with some box cars, maybe uh, like some right of way or some track maintenance. You know, whatever the hell you want to do, it's there. And then of course you've got the uh, the CSX engines. If you want to modernize this, grab the CSX engines, click the off the rails button, and uh, have a go with that. All right, here we go. We're on a 2.2% grade. This is a pretty stifling grade right here for Clinchfield. This little spur. I'm gonna see if I can't get it up to notch eight here. Yeah, that sounds all right, going through the notches. Different RPM and amp ranges. And the guy that made the sound pack, uh, the engine sound pack, it's, uh, from what I can tell, he's he's into it. You know, he's, he's updated both packs, I think, two or three times already. And something else I noticed, that bell. <laughs> it was stuck to one side. And then I activated the bell, right? And then it just sticks to the other side. On the grand scale of things, is, is that a deal breaker? Is that a, you know, worth a, a whiny negative Steam review comment? Not, not for me, personally, it's not. It's weird. Not a lot of people probably notice it, but uh, on the grand scale of things, it's, you know, it's just there. got about a mile do another run by here for sound scientific sound purposes get like right up on the damn track here
3.4% grade. Holy crap. Wow. I didn't realize, uh... I was kind of playing around in this area the other day trying to set this up and I went down and uh, I wasn't really paying attention to the grade, but damn. Another good thing about these little branch line runs like this is You know, you're not sitting on a mainline run for an hour and a half. Um, and while that's fine and dandy, and I have nothing against that, it, you know, I don't want to do that day in, day out when, I, when I'm able to play this. It's nice being able to do uh, other activities, different areas. See if we can get this thing stopped right here. And it's neat being able to uh, use one engine here. one of the tipples, double shoot. That's pretty cool. And see, that's something else you may not see if you don't uh, check out these other spurs like this. That's a cool looking uh, facility there. Double doozy. Coming straight out of the mountain. Alright, there's Blue Diamond. Every time I say or read that name, I think of the, uh, there's like a, a mixed nut company, I think, called Blue Diamond. Mixed nuts and coal combo. See if we get some wheel slip here. It's 2.5 right here. It's a pretty significant grade. This train would probably realistically need another engine. Hear the fans ramping down now. And we're on the wrong track. Look at that. Always check your switches, folks. I am a living example of always be checking them switches. But that's it. We're going to plop her down right here. Just kind of wanted to check out some of the mods. As I stated in the beginning of the video, if you made it this far, I will put the links to said mods down below. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll be back soon with something else. Till then, take care. See you next time. Bye.